The Gospel of Luke, an overview of its origin and an introduction. September of 2023. Learning objectives for this module include the following. To define gospel. To identify Luke. To introduce the Gospel of Luke. To defend Luke's place in our canon. To suggest Luke's themes and to set some study goals. In his prologue, Luke wrote, Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us. Many, that is, there were already other gospels or sayings of Jesus that were circulating in the latter half of the first century and in the following centuries. See the website Download Session 1, and view the document Early Christian Gospels. The things that were fulfilled amongst us are mainly those that had been foretold in the Hebrew Scriptures, just as they were handed down to us by those who, from the first, were eyewitnesses and servants of the Word. Eyewitnesses included Jesus' disciples, of which there were several hundred. The servants of the Word were mainly his apostles, and the Word or message or material itself came not from angels, nor through dreams, nor from old myths, nor from any human imagination. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, he investigated includes his several months in Judea whilst Paul was in prison, where Luke was interviewing the apostles and many other eyewitnesses. Everything includes mainly those points found in Acts chapter 1. The beginning here. Does this mean I interviewed the witnesses? Or is he saying, I begin with John's and Jesus' birth narratives? In verse 3, he continues, I too decided to write an orderly account for you so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Orderly here. Possibly meaning the chronology, the travels, the words, and the deeds of the historical Jesus. Certainty, that is, these Gospels are the best documentary evidence that we possess of Jesus' life, deeds, teachings, death, and resurrection. In the book of Acts, Luke would later write, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. When he says all, he uses the usual Greek term that which often relates to all kinds of something, thus a wide sample of Jesus' deeds and ideas. He began, that is, the things Jesus began to say and do, until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. Heaven here means through the physical sky into the invisible realm. He notes that the era of the Holy Spirit began with Jesus, which Spirit is still present with us. The apostles are those to whom Jesus delegated his own authority. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. His suffering certainly refers to his death by crucifixion, and he appeared following his resurrection from death. His proofs included himself, visible, audible, and tactile. From whence came our canon, that is, our lists of authoritative writing. We understand that this began with God. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son. 
God had earlier empowered his prophets. Prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The message of the prophets have been preserved for us in the scriptures by those who heard them, wrote down their words, later compiled, edited, and published them as scripture. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. God also came into history in time and space in the person of Jesus. Jesus saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him as a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son. Jesus chose apostles, that is, sent ones who accompanied him between three and four years. Jesus said to them after he returned from death to life, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed upon them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The apostles have left us a number of writings, including the Gospels, the Epistles, and the Apocalypse. Our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave to him. Now the apostles also had their disciples. Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you. When you come, bring my scrolls, especially the parchments. These disciples who learned from the apostles also have left their writings. With the help of Silas, whom I regard as a faithful brother, I have written to you briefly, testifying that this is the true grace of God. So, the prophet's scriptures, the apostles' writings, and their disciples' writings together comprise our canon, our list of authoritative writings. You will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. So what are Gospels? These are historical biographies that preserve truth, for which reason we consider them scripture, that inform seekers, the primary means of evangelism, that teach newcomers, that is, our catechism of things to believe, to train disciples in leading a life pleasing to God, to defend our basic beliefs, its apologetics function, and to build communities through common theology, the study of God. Some samples of other Gospels that were circulating in the first and second centuries include the Egerton Papyrus, an account of miracles and sayings of Jesus, some of which are in our canonical Gospels and others which are not. There was the Ebionite Gospel, mentioned by early church leaders, which denied the virginal conception of Jesus. Then there was the Shepherd of Hermas, a collection of visions and commands supposedly given by Jesus, widely circulated and read amongst the earliest Christians. And there was the Gospel of Judas, written in Coptic, translated from Greek, teaching Gnostic doctrines, and many others. Read or download the document Early Christian Gospels at luke.cura.download. Now, Luke is a synoptic gospel. That is, it shares materials with the Gospels of Matthew and of Mark. Thus, about 76% of Mark can be found in Luke's and in Matthew's Gospels. About 23 or 24% of Luke's and Matthew's Gospels are in common, and then each Gospel has a certain percentage of material found in no other written Gospel. Therefore, scholars debate the priority of the four Gospels, which was written first, second, third, and fourth, and their dependence upon each other. 
which gospel borrowed or copied material from another? What were their written sources? Were there other documents from which these gospels borrowed material? How much of their material came from those who recalled orally what they knew of Jesus and his teaching? And were any of these translated? Was the Gospel of Matthew, for example, first written in Aramaic and then translated into Greek? And any redaction, that is, editing that may have taken place after these Gospels were composed. So then, who was Luke? Well, if the author of our Gospel was Luke, then he was Paul's traveling companion, mentioned several times in Paul's writings. He was a Gentile believer. In Colossians chapter 4, Paul's Jewish companions are named, and then Luke is named separately. He was called a physician. If he was the author of the Acts, then also the author of our Gospel. This Luke was an itinerant church planter and the author of our Gospel. Again, in reply to the query, who wrote Luke's Gospel, we read where Paul wrote, Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, and my scrolls, and especially the parchments. Now why would Paul with Timothy bring together Luke and Mark with scrolls and parchments? When was Luke's gospel written? Well, the gospel of Luke was widely known and quoted early in the second century in writings preserved to this day. It was written before the Acts, which tracks Paul's mission until his imprisonment in Rome in 64 CE. Therefore, the gospel was likely written sometime before the year 70 CE. However, not all agree. The conservative view suggests that Luke was written between 59 and 63, that the author was Luke, Paul's missionary companion, and was widely known and copied by the second century. There is another view, more common amongst skeptics, unbelievers, and liberal scholars, that the gospel was composed sometime between the years 80 and 110 CE, in which case the author is unknown. They even suggest that Luke at times in the book of Acts contradicts the writings of Paul, and that the gospel was still being revised in the second century. Now, the earliest documentary witnesses to Luke's Gospel include Greek papyrus P4, copied in the second century. Though part of it is lost, fragments are preserved in Luke's chapters 1 through 6. Papyrus P75, copied in the second, possibly the third century, contained the rest of the Gospel. The early Greek biblical codices, that is, Many books bound together contain the Gospel of Luke. For example, in Codex Aleph, called Sinaiticus, copied in the 4th century, written in unsealed letters, that is, capital letters on parchment. Now, what about the theology of Luke's Gospel? Scholars like to talk about salvation history. In this case, the history of God's salvation was foretold in the Law, the Prophets, and the Psalms, that is, the Hebrew Scriptures, that the Kingdom of God came with John and with Jesus, and continues by the presence of the Holy Spirit, who abides in believing communities. And thus, we Christians await Jesus' return as the Son of Man, fulfilling all the requirements of the Messiah. Luke also presents personal salvation for you and for me. This is for all who repent of their disbelief and of their disobedience. If you do so, then you can be assured that you will still be alive with Jesus 
when your body dies and you live in hope of resurrection and of Jesus' reign as king over all the earth. How is Luke's gospel structured? Well, it consists of a preface, which we have read, naming its sponsor, Luke's methods and purpose, the birth narratives, the dawn of the promised new era, John's mission, which was to introduce the Messiah, Jesus' mission, which required him to resist temptation and hostility, his long journey showing messianic signs and teachings, which began in chapter 9, verse 41, which says, Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem. Then we have his ministry in Jerusalem, where he confronted both Israelite and Roman rulers. Seventhly, his crucifixion following the Last Supper, arrest, and trials, resulting in death followed by resurrection when he showed himself alive with many proofs, and then his ascension, his return into heaven, having given the Holy Spirit and commanding mission to all nations. Now, Luke is especially known for his inclusivism. For example, the angel who sang, To people of good will, regardless of nationality an old Simeon who held baby Jesus in his arms and called him a light to Gentiles. Luke quotes from Isaiah who said, All flesh shall see. And Luke portrays Samaritans as good persons. And he includes the story of the widow of Zarephath and Jesus' famous parable of the king who ordered his servants to go out into the hedges the streets to find the homeless and compel them to come in to his banquet. Then Jesus gave a commission to preach forgiveness of sins to all nations and Luke's humanism. He portrays Jesus' interaction with many individuals and his interest in outcasts. Luke portrays no fewer than 13 interactions with women and shows a special interest in children. He presents Jesus in many social relations and includes Jesus' warnings to the rich whilst giving hope to the poor. Now, in the rest of this course, we shall seek to believe Jesus' teaching presented in Luke's Gospel, to claim his promises, to obey his commandments, to defend Jesus' deity, to experience Jesus' power, to proclaim Jesus' good news, and to hope for Jesus' return. Thus your assignment is to visit the website download to view the Bible Project videos, to view the overviews on Canon, to read Luke chapter 1 in different translations on separate days, to read the notes in your study Bible, consulting a Bible dictionary, and then compile queries and comments to present when you meet together to study the Gospel of Luke.